Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Carolyn Ward, and I'm the CEO of the Blue Ridge Parkway Foundation, and I would like to welcome everyone to our first presentation webinar of Your Gifts at Work, and this will be an update about the renovation and restoration work occurring at the Bluffs Restaurant. I'd like to introduce Kevin Brandt. He will be giving the presentation today to show us a little bit behind the scenes of some of the work that's happening at the Bluffs Restaurant to bring this gym back to life. The presentation will last about 20 minutes. We'll save some time at the end to address some of your questions. So if you move your mouse over your screen, down at the bottom, you will see a Q&A icon. If you click that icon, you can submit questions at any point during the presentation. And we will try to address as many of those as we can at the end. There's also, if any of you are having any issues, audio issues, there's a little microphone to the left on the bottom of your screen. If you click that icon, you can see if you can connect by telephone if you're having issues through your computer and there'll be a phone number that pops up that you can call in on another phone. So once again, thank you all so much for joining us and I'd like to thank you so much for your support. The work that you're about to see happening at the Bluffs would not be possible were it not for the support of all of you to help bring this back to life. We cannot thank you enough. And so you're going to get an insider's view of your gifts at work on the Blue Ridge Parkway. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Kevin Brandt, project manager at the Blue Ridge Parkway Foundation, to give us a view of the past, the work that's happening today, and the exciting upcoming future for the Bluffs. Kevin? Well, thank you, Carolyn. Uh, this is really an exciting moment. And uh, if you're a fan of history and nature the way I am, uh, I think you'll enjoy seeing some of these photographs and seeing the kind of progress that we're making at Bluffs today. You know, it's, it's sometimes hard to remember that when the uh, parkway was first constructed in 1936, the landscape looked very, very different. Uh, and this is in the vicinity of, of Downton Park, the Bluffs, uh, as we know it. And uh, for a lot of people, myself included, because I'm sort of a newcomer to, uh, to the parkway, uh, I hadn't realized that before the Bluffs gas station and restaurant was there, that it actually was a work camp for the people who are building the, uh, the parkway. Uh, and I'm always fascinated by actual construction photographs uh, showing how the, uh, the building was built, what the landscape looked like around there. Uh, and so it was really uh, a fascinating uh, image to uh, see them setting up these, uh, uh, you know, the forms for the foundation uh, in September of 1948. They even had a sawmill and they mixed all the concrete on site. Uh, and so when you see the, the wood that's used in there, that was all probably uh, timbered close by, hauled to the site, and then run through the, uh, through the sawmill. And here, this is uh, probably uh, late fall of um, 1948. You can see the gas station in the background. Um, <clears throat> for whatever reason, that was completed first. And uh, you can see some of the, the form work of the foundation of the restaurant there in the, uh, in the center ground. Uh, but I just find these photographs really fascinating. It gives you some sense of the challenge that they had in building this facility. Uh, and when they were done in the spring of 1949, this is what the restaurant looked like. And uh, I'll point out a couple of things you may not recognize, uh, but the next time you're up there, look at, look at this. The original downspouts were a diagonal uh, off of the gutters. And when you look at this gutter, uh, on the restaurant now, it looks that way, but the section of the gutter over here and on the kitchen side uh, are very different now. And so uh, take a look at that the next time you're up there. Uh, it operated uh, in much this fashion until the fall of 2010, uh, but as soon as it was open, it became an overnight favorite. Uh, you know, I can't believe how many people have told me the stories of the times that they were up there with their families. Uh, 
Uh, and from these photographs, you can tell that it really was uh, a very popular place. I'm also fascinated by seeing the, uh, the bumper sticker right there that says Skyline Caverns. Um, so even in the day, uh, you know, people enjoyed getting out and seeing all of the features that are, that are in the, uh, the western part of the state. Um, I also get a, you know, a kick out of seeing this photograph. This is uh, from July 4th, 1956. <clears throat> and there's a ranger there having to direct traffic. There's so many people up at the bluffs. Uh, seeing the old style gas station um, really reminds me of just how popular this place used to be. Now here in this picture, you can see the trees have grown up. <clears throat> and uh, uh, you know the area is not quite as crowded in this photograph, which maybe is from the 70s, it was undated. Um, but the exterior of the bluffs remains, uh, even today, very much as it did when it opened in 1949. This photograph uh, from 1952 uh, shows that uh, the interior also remained very much the same over its entire 60 years that it operated. Uh, and in fact, when we started this process uh, of restoring and, and giving a new life to the bluffs, uh, some of those stools were still there. Uh, one of which has been retained in the park's uh, archival uh, collection, uh, you know, as a as a uh, artifact for future use. Um, but you can notice in the uh, photograph some of the the uh, interesting things. The you know, light fixtures uh, were still there. The checkerboard pattern of the flooring is still there. Uh, unfortunately, the chairs and tables are gone. Uh, but in this photograph, you can see that the counter extends a little bit closer to the photographer's end than it does uh, in this next photograph. And for reasons that we don't know, um, the, uh, the counter was shortened. They added a few more light fixtures, um, but uh, largely the interior remained the same over the course of its history. Now, one of the things that people talk about, uh, about the bluffs is the friendly service. And um, I've met many people who have uh, talked about their times uh, enjoying the food, but really enjoying family and friends and the staff who, uh, who worked up there, some of whom worked there for many, many years. <clears throat> uh, here in this photograph, you know, you, you get a sense that this was just a very warm and uh, welcoming kind of place. Uh, and certainly the service was legendary. Uh, and even now, you know, I, you know, when I'm up there uh, doing site inspections, uh, visitors even uh, a couple weeks ago uh, would stop and tell me stories about their time eating and enjoying uh, time with family and friends at the Bluffs. Um, and unfortunately, what had become an icon along the, uh, along the parkway uh, closed at the end of the 2010 season. And uh, lots and lots of people were saddened by that. Um, and fortunately, we're in a position now where we can look forward to a future. But when the place was closed, uh, they closed it up tight. Unfortunately, the roof leaked, there wasn't any ventilation, and mold started to grow literally everywhere. Uh, and it required a special cleaning process. And in that process, they disposed of virtually all of the interior furnishings that were there. Uh, there really wasn't much left after this process. Um, but fortunately, the community of stewards, of which you all are a member, uh, came to the rescue and uh, helped raise the funds and bring the attention so that the foundation could replace the roof and correct drainage issues, um, you know, which were really at the heart of the mold issue. And with that clean slate, the Park Service and the foundation uh, and others were able to begin to reimagine the rebirth of, uh, of bluffs. Uh, and it was no small task to, uh, to go from that mold uh, infested building to imagining something that would look like this. Uh, because what we've been working hard to do is make sure that the bluffs, even in its new iteration, has the look and feel of the original. Uh, the fur, uh, you know, most of you have probably been to the bluffs when you come in. This is what we want you to be able to see. Uh, we want it to be a familiar uh, place and, and have that sense of, of being a part of family. 
uh, one of the things that you'll you'll notice is that uh, when we reopen, you'll notice that the original light fixtures will have been restored. Uh, there will be new stools and tables to match the original. Uh, and we've been very careful in, in making sure that we replicate those details as best we can. But before we started, the bluffs was really in pretty some sad shape. Um, you know, you can see here the doors were taped up, uh, plaster and paint are peeling, uh, the floor is in really rough shape. This is looking towards the old restrooms, and you'll see another shot here in a minute of, um, of the new restrooms, which uh, will be handicap accessible. Uh, but PLUS was really showing its age. Uh, and so the first thing we had to do was come in and remove the floor tile, which contained asbestos. Uh, we removed uh, a lot of lead-based paint off of uh, walls and other surfaces. And then everything got a thorough cleaning uh, because there was still some residue left from the cleaning compound that, the, uh, uh, that had been used to remove the mold. And once that was done, then we could get into the real work. And here you can see the plaster walls being repaired. Uh, you can see some of the framing to create the accessible restrooms uh, there in the background. And in the restroom, uh, unbeknownst to us, the ceramic tile itself, as well as the mortar that held the tile in place, contained asbestos. And so we had to mitigate that. Uh, and the new framing that you see there uh, will hold up uh, new sheetrock and new floor and wall tile so that we'll end up with all new surfaces uh, when we reopen. Now in this pic picture, you see the uh, pair of screen doors. Um, I didn't realize that uh, when the Bluffs was first built, the screen doors were not there. They were added several years later. Uh, but one pair of those doors are gonna be repurposed and used on the east end of the building, the end by the uh, dining room. Uh, and so where we, we remove things to ret uh, return it to its original appearance, we're going to uh, repurpose those doors. Other doors are being uh, uh, repurposed as well. This one is one of the doors that will go on to the west end where the kitchen is. <clears throat> Here we are in the, in the dining room and you can start to get a sense that the, the bluffs is coming back. Uh, you can see the paint uh, on the walls and on the timber framing um, and on the underside of the roof deck. All that has been painted with one coat. Before we're done, it'll get a couple more. Uh, but it really starts to whet your appetite for what this uh, restaurant is going to come back looking at. So here we have a little video. If we can get it to play. Yes, every time I'm up there, there are anywhere from three to maybe eight uh, craftsmen working in various parts of the building to uh, get, the, get the building back in shape. One of the things you see on the floor in that picture are these blue dots. Those are actually black, uh, brass fittings uh, that were, were used to hold up tables. Now, we don't know that they were ever used, but attention to that, that kind of detail uh, is one of the things that we've been working on. So here you can see more of that counter uh, being put back into its position. Um, we had to move it a little closer to the center of the dining room so that we had enough uh, clearance behind it for people to operate. Uh, here you can see that the face of the uh, counter is, is uh, going up. And really it was at this point in our construction process that uh, we had to work with the Park Service and their guidelines and the CDC guidelines uh, for social distancing because on some pieces, in some steps of the work, you could maintain that six foot or more distance. Other circumstances, you couldn't. And so at times, people are wearing masks. Uh, when I'm up there, I generally wear a mask. In fact, uh, if you can see my chin, you can see that I had to shave so I could wear the respirator while I'm there. Uh, but the contractors have been very good about uh, observing that work. And here you can see that the countertop is starting to get its top, and you can really start to feel how the bluffs is going to come back and look. You can see that we've accommodated a lot of storage in the back of the counter. 
Uh, and so when the, when the bluffs comes back, it'll be a really well-functioning uh, operation. Here you can see the uh, electricians doing their rough-in electrical work. Uh, these are the accessible restrooms. We've had to make a little bit of a modification in this corner of the building because for accessibility purposes, they needed to be a little bit larger. Uh, so work is coming along very, very well on the inside. Now here we switch to the kitchen and you can see this knee wall uh, that's been constructed. And on the left side of that, kind of the back side of that wall, you'll see the cook line in the future, a six burner uh, range, uh, a big griddle and a couple of fryers. Uh, and on the front side of that, kind of on the side of the, the wall where we're standing in this photograph will be a steam table. So the kitchen has been laid out to be as efficient as possible. And it's really a rather small kitchen when you think about the number of meals that are served there. Um, but it's an exciting time to be thinking about uh, the bluffs coming back. Now, <clears throat> you know, as much as Carolyn and I would love to be in the kitchen uh, serving the food, we went through a process, however, to find someone who was really well equipped to operate the kitchen. And so through a competitive uh, request for proposal or RFP process, uh, we interviewed a number of interested parties and in the end selected Muddy Creek uh, Enterprises who operate uh, both the restaurant and music hall in Sparta as well as a, um, a cafe in Old Salem. Uh, and they'll be operating that under a five-year operating agreement. Um, and here are a couple pictures off their Facebook page if you uh, uh, haven't eaten uh, at their places in Sparta or Old Salem, uh, you should know that they scratch make all their biscuits and they pan fry their chicken. Uh, and it's been uh, very good to work with them thus far. So some of the things that are on the menu, we're still working with them, but uh, you know, classic fried chicken, ham biscuits, uh, homemade biscuits with gravy. Uh, and of course, uh, until recently, I had never had sweet potato pancakes. Uh, but uh, we'll have those up at Bluffs, and um, you know I think people will find that uh, you know the food will be as good as it ever was, as well as the service. So it's an exciting time. Uh, and just as we've been paying attention to all those details, uh, here's a close-up shot of the five remaining stools that were up there. You can see a tag on one. That's the one that's going into the archives. Um, but we've selected stools that are almost mirror images of uh, what was there historically. Uh, and so we're really paying a lot of attention to those details. These are, this is one of the uh, light fixtures that hung from the ceiling. They're actually being restored and we have some other light fixtures that will complement those so that we have enough light in the restaurant. You know, we went to great pains to match the colors uh, in the building. And so here you can see us matching the colors of the underside of the roof deck um, so that we make the, uh, the restaurant feel and look the way it did originally. Here's a sampling of the floor tiles. Um, as I said, the old ones contained an asbestos, so we needed to remove those. Uh, but the checkerboard pattern and the black outline will still be there. You know, we didn't find very many artifacts uh, hidden in the walls or, or other places of the building, but we did find this Tom's peanut rack in the attic. And we're, we're gonna find some way of reusing that uh, in the new bluffs uh, when, it, when it opens. So, and with all that attention to detail, uh, we thought it only fitting that the bluffs would have a new logo to go with that familiar look and feel and, and the smells and aromas of, of fried chicken uh, and all the other good uh, things being cooked in the kitchen. And so we're sharing with you <clears throat> for the first time uh, the new logo for the Bluffs, the color there in the black and white. Um, and we think it gives it both a fresh look, but also uh, reminiscent of the uh, other uh, feel of the, uh, of the restaurant. Um, and so, um, you know, we can't wait to welcome you back to the Bluffs. We've got the logo there on the hostess stand. You can see the restored light fixtures and uh, new stools and tables and chairs. Um, you can even see a historic photograph hanging on the wall. But because we know what photographs were originally hanging at both ends of the restaurant, those exact same photographs or new prints of them 
will be hung in the restaurant. And so in closing, we'd really like to thank all of you, this community of stewards who are just absolutely amazing for making this possible. Uh, without your assistance and your, your leadership and your donations, none of this would be possible. Uh, and when I think about the thousands of people who are gonna be coming through here going forward, uh, this is gonna be able to create a whole new generation of memories for people along the parkway. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kevin, for the update. It's nice to see a little behind the scenes of some of the work that's been possible because of all our folks out in the community. <clears throat> so we have a few questions. We have time for a few of them. So do you know for sure when the restaurant will be open? <laughs> uh, well, we don't know the exact time. Um, we are shooting for late July, uh, but we're all going through this coronavirus uh, time period. Uh, that may affect the, uh, the logistics and uh, delivery of kitchen equipment because all the kitchen equipment is gonna be brand new. Everything from the hood over the range to the ovens that are gonna make the, the homemade biscuits, um, it's, all, it's all gonna be new. And some of that equipment has yet to be ordered uh, some of it is on order. And so whether they have any supply chain uh, challenges or not uh, you know, remains to be seen. But we're very hopeful that uh, midsummer summer uh, we'll be able to open. Fabulous. And then I'll take this one because it's my favorite question. I get it all the time. So we know uh, folks out there know it's been a very long process. It's been closed for over 10 years and we still haven't quite got the restaurant open, but we have several folks that would like to know when we're gonna reopen the lodge. So it again is one of my favorite questions. Um, we all know that the lodge is very important to everyone as, as the restaurant is. And we're gonna go through this one step at a time. Um, the lodge will take a, a much larger uh, investment to be able to reopen that facility. It also has some mold remediation work that would need to be done. So the time frame and the work and the financial commitment is extraordinary to be able to try to get the lodge back online. So we're gonna get the restaurant up and running and we'll see how that goes and see how much support we have from folks in the community and then we'll talk about next steps about what could be done with the lodge, if anything. We have another question here. Will the restaurant be serving three meals a day? So the plan is to serve three meals a day, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, probably a brunch menu on, uh, on weekends. Uh, it'll also be serving beer and wine. Uh, and so that's a little bit of a change from the past. Um, but uh, yes, it will serve three meals a day. We haven't established the full hours yet, uh, but it'll probably be pretty similar to what it was in the past. And we have a comment on a question from another of our listeners who was very uh, observant and noticed that that was Ellen in one of the pictures that you showed of the wait staff at the Bluffs who worked at Bluffs from the time that it was open until the time that it was closed, that was Ellen in the picture. Well, if there are no other questions, we're gonna end this update uh, of an insider's report of showing some of the work that you all have made possible because of your commitment and dedication to the Blue Ridge Parkway Foundation and the Blue Ridge Parkway. Thank you so much for everything that you've done. If you have additional questions that you would like to ask uh, afterwards, please feel free to give us an email. You receive that in your inbox and you'll also receive a follow-up communication regarding this. And I have one quick question for everybody out there. Would you be interested in future updates from the foundation showing your gifts at work? So there's a little poll that should have popped up on your screen. We know that these days of COVID-19 are a little bit different. And so we're trying to think of creative ways of keeping everybody updated and engaged about the work that you all are making possible. But we also know that you get inundated often with updates like this and webinars and communication. So we're just trying to get a sense from you all what you prefer and thank you all so much for responding. And we have 100% of the respondents have indicated that they would like something like this in the future. So 
you may look for emails from us and you may get updates about other work that you have made possible along the Blue Ridge Parkway through the foundation. So thank you all so much. Have a great day. Hope to see you on the parkway one day soon. <laughs>